JavaScript framework. Um, what it what it is is uh, so what what uh, so what is Meteor? So um, what is it? Um, it's a free open source platform built on top of Node.js that makes it uh, dramatically uh, faster to write like rich real time applications. Um, so uh, basically, what it is is it's basically like a wrapper over Node.js um, that lets you write uh, JavaScript on the client and the server and have it all uh, like connect over web, web sockets and log polling so that it's real time uh, by default so that uh, whatever you type, uh, whatever you can put, you can what you just have to type JavaScript and then whatever you uh, like post it, uh, it will just uh, communicate back and forth between your client and your server, so you're not setting up like REST endpoints or hooking, wiring it up. Um, so how to think of it? Yeah, so it's what sits between your app's database and its user interface and keeps them in sync. So if I'm gonna add like a user record uh, for Josh. Um, in my database, then it's automatically going to propagate over to my uh, screen. So whenever I update a record, it's automatically going to sync it with the client uh, screen. So um, it's real time, and you're not like refreshing the page; it's just sending it straight over WebSockets. So uh, it's just uh, sending it. Um, so yeah, one of the key one of the key uh, features of it is called uh, live page updates. So when you're uh, writing, so when you're writing your app, uh, no more like thinking about AJAX and refreshing your page and setting up uh, endpoints, and you're just you're just creating one uh, one, uh, one full stack JavaScript application that is real time uh, by default. So you're not having to worry about setting up web sockets or like all the difficult uh, things that uh, take place when you're setting up an application, trying to make it real time. Um, so how does this happen? How does it how does it do this? Um, so the Meteor team created their own uh, protocol called the Distributed Data Protocol. Um, it's a standard way to solve uh, the biggest like problem facing client side JavaScript developers. So how how am I gonna uh, call? How am I gonna ask for a record? How am I gonna ask for a user record and uh, set and send it down to the uh, and send it down to me? Uh, without having to go in and set up all my server-side code. Um, so if, I, if I'm just a client-side developer, I probably just like, uh, a lot of, they just know like JavaScript or they're not really familiar with server-side. So with, so with uh, Meteor as a full-stack platform, um, they can easily just uh, like find a record or if they're gonna set up a text box and have it enter a record, they can have it insert. And so whenever, uh, so whenever records are being changed, it's automatically going to uh, propagate to the database and propagate back to the screen. Um, and yeah, and it's supported on a, like a whole uh, host of browsers. Some of the newer browsers uh, it uses WebSockets, and for some of the older browsers like Internet Explorer 8 and 9, it uses like Ajax and long polling to uh, support this operation. Okay, so one of the uh, like the key uh, components of Meteor is called publications and subscriptions. So I'm gonna on my server side, I'm gonna publish records. So I'm gonna publish posts of the last, the top ten posts. Then on this client side, I'm gonna subscribe to my top ten posts. And so then with those, I can operate. So I'm I'm sending the data down over the wire through the server, and then I'm subscribing on the client. So I can send out a bunch of subscriptions and publications, and um, it's, it, it uses it has like a mini Mongo uh, built into the client. So all the same operations that you can do on the server, you can do straight in your client code also once you have the database. Okay, so yeah, some of the other features of it. So one of the big things is hot code pushes. So when uh, so when I'm going to deploy my application on a server, I'm not going to, and I have thousands of users on Amazon, I'm not going to want to take, take down my site to push new changes to the site. So with one of the key features of Meteor is that you can easily just make hot code pushes uh, just instantly, and uh, you won't have any problem. Uh, it will just be able to work right away, and you won't have any problems with any downtime or anything. It will just uh, instantly be able to make changes on, on the fly. 
And also one of the other big things is, so like latency, latency conversation. A lot of us have like mobile devices. We use uh, like 3G, 4G. Um, in like mobile devices, there's a lot of like latency. It's very slow. Uh, so, so one of the things that Meteor does is when a user makes a change, it will automatically show up on the screen so that they're not waiting for it to show up. Then it will send a code to the server and uh, it will check it to make sure that it's working. And then, and that it's and that it's accurate, and then it will send it back and, and confirm it. So uh, you're automatically it's automatically like accounting for your mobile devices, um, and using like uh, if you have a slow internet, it will help you out. Okay, so yeah, security is a big thing. Um, so in Meteor, the client and the server share the same database API. Um, code running on the Server has direct access to the database and code running on the client does not have access to it. Um, so one of the big things is obviously publications and subscriptions. Um, so with what you're doing with that is you obviously, I don't want, if I'm storing payment info or user info or passwords, I don't want anyone that can uh, go on my website to access my, in the console to access all my database info. So with, so how it works is that you're going to, you're going to limit access to the server only, uh, the, the secure uh, like secure records, and then you can still do like manipulations on the front end, but you're keeping you're keeping the sensitive info on the on the back end, so that you're so that's very a sec secure platform. And there's also like auto publish and insecure packages, uh, which help uh, like you have it lets you limit access to user like user IDs only or certain people. Um, so that only certain people can manipulate your documents. Um, so yeah, databases. So Meteor currently it has a MongoDB uh, built straight into the framework. So whenever you're just going to install it and run your application, it will automatically just have MongoDB. Uh, you just start your application, MongoDB will be there already wired up and ready to go. Um, so. Uh, it only currently supports Mongo, but there's uh, like future support coming for SQL and Redis and other uh, databases. Um, so yeah, smart packages. So there's obviously a lot of uh, different packages that uh, JavaScript developers and web developers use, uh, jQuery, Bootstrap, CoffeeScript. Uh, so with those, um, it's there's a package manager built straight into Meteor, so all you just have to do is type Meteor add and you can add any of your favorite packages. Um, so uh, it, you don't have to worry about finding different script tags and Googling around for different, uh, downloading different files. It's all built straight into the framework. So you're having a uh, package manager, powerful like package manager built straight into your framework. If you're familiar with like Python and pip or Linux and sudo apt get and stuff. Um, so Meteor accounts. Uh, so one of the other uh, cool features of Meteor is that um, it has a Meteor accounts package, which will automatically. Uh, all you just have to do is like Meteor add accounts, and you will automatically have access to like a, it will give you like a login button tag, and you automatically have all the password, all your like verification, resetting, logging in, signing up, automatically uh, created for you straight out of the box, and it also has like different uh, like GitHub, Facebook, it automatically uh, sets that up for you and then all you just have to do is type in your API key. So you're, you're like, uh, so when you're just starting out your application, you, you're saving a lot of time by not having the, the login functionalities already built in. So you're saving like a lot of time not having to hook it all together. Okay, and so Atmosphere, um, this is a community package manager. Um, and there's like thousands of packages on it, and it will be like merged into the core uh, eventually. So uh, with that, there's uh, just like any like host of community packages, some of the like foundation TypeScript. Uh, there's different routers, Angular JS, a whole bunch of different uh, libraries and packages. Um, basically, that anything you can cover. Um, so with that, and you also can use like if you're familiar with Node.js, there's npm, which is a package manager. Um, and you can automatically use any NPM package also with your Meteor app. So you have access to like tens of thousands of packages to use with your application. 
Okay, so I'm um, testing. So with testing, uh, there's two different like testing frameworks for Meteor. Um, one is called Lake, uh, and there's another RTD, which runs your test. So if you're uh, wondering how you're going to test your application, if you're going to be able to run unit tests or acceptance testing, with this you can uh, use this to help uh, run tests on your application. Okay, so another question, I guess. So why use this over Ruby? And Ruby and Rails, or Python and Django, or Java in a different framework? Uh, well, there's a few reasons. Uh, one is it's incredibly easy to create real-time applications. Uh, with a lot of those other frameworks, once uh, they're very easy to get set up with like REST APIs and AJAX, but once you start trying to integrate real-time into your application, it will get like complicated very quickly. Um, another reason is you're eliminating a lot of the boilerplate, so uh, you can basically get like a fully functioning app uh, running straight away, uh, like with like a, bit, a lot of features, and so you're cutting down a lot of your development time by using Meteor. Um, and another reason, uh, you only need to use one language, so if you only know JavaScript, you can completely write an entire application. Um, and then, uh, and then the Meteor, and then the packaging system. So you have access to thousands of packages, so you're not uh, reinventing your wheel a lot when you're trying to create your application. Um, so yeah, how to get started? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, you just have to you just install it. It's supported on Linux and Mac. You just create your application. Uh, you say uh, and you just run it, and then uh, let me run it. Down.
And uh, if you look over on this one, I just showed up. So, uh, so yeah, with uh, the framework, uh, so yeah, uh, a few of the like key components are like uh, like a lot of now like web frameworks. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. So uh, with Meteor, you're getting a lot of uh, like features out of the box. You're getting backend, client side. You're getting the database. Uh, you're getting like the server automatically uh, wired up. So one of the I guess what you're getting from Meteor is. Uh, like a very uh, like cutting edge framework um, that will be like uh, that that is like what the apps are moving towards with like more real time like Facebook and Twitter uh, you don't really have to refresh your page it's just all sending it to you so it's really just creating like a boilerplate uh, that will allow you to create powerful applications at a very fast rate. JavaScript, uh, like with runtime, like uh, just like kind of small JavaScript games and stuff. How how hard would it be to take the leap to be doing small like front end applications that just run on page load to start working on server side stuff, start to get a web web application going? Because normally it's like Ruby on Rails or Ruby on Rails, but I like the idea of having just the one language using Mongo, which also takes JavaScript style calls. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's very like easy. Like there's a lot of like there's a library, there's client, there's server. So uh, you you're allowed to use like most of your code in between. You can share a lot of your code between them, and then you just have to write like minimal, usually server side, like some methods or. So uh, if if you know like uh, front end JavaScript, it's very easy to transition. Okay. It also seems very interesting. You said that they give you leverage to take advantage of. Facebook, for example, or Google's and other authenticated lock, logging service that are, that are already implemented, and you can simply just take those in and take advantage of the fact that they're written, I guess, bring an open source. So that completely abstracts um, for you having to do an authenticated login and having to worry about people going like into the console and looking at your source code and like seeing like all the yeah yeah yeah. So it's just uh, automatically like authenticated and secured for you. And you're not worried about setting up an API. Uh, you just have to get an API key, but that's headed from the clients. So it's just very uh, easy and easy to get started with. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm just curious about the maturity of Meteor. It's, for example, we're, if, if you're coming from a more legacy uh, monolithic application for the big to where you want to start looking into the more services oriented, you know, this, this, this type of way of going of apps, real time stuff. Are is this something we want to adopt right now and start learning, or, or is this because we because we were coming from like an Oracle database and stuff like that, so we could we would migrate pieces of our applications to stuff like something like this. Is that is that feasible at this point? Or how, how mature is Meteor for that now? Okay, yeah. So it's currently at zero point eight. Um, and it should be at like one point oh in like the next few months. So after that. Uh, they were start, like recommending making like production apps on it. Um, so I guess it, it, lo it depends on like a lot of your performance and uh, like the JVM and different like Go and stuff have better like uh, server performance. So uh, like depending I guess on like your requirements of your application, a lot of it can transition over to uh, frameworks like these, and some of them uh, uh, would have to still use uh, different frameworks that are better or languages that are better for. Uh, whatever application you're making. Uh, is there any compatibility issues uh, with uh, breaking systems, kind of breaking system that comply with uh, this problem? Um, so yeah, it currently only works on uh, Macs and Linux, and there's also like a Windows version, uh, but it's like an unofficial, but it's uh, supported. Um, and with that, uh, you shouldn't really have any uh, like problems if your uh, like compatibility issues. It should be able to run on like most uh, like Linux distros and if you're, or most like Windows. So if you're, uh, you just have to like install it, and uh, it shouldn't really uh, inter it, it it installs it in, like a separate folder, so it shouldn't have any interference. You can even have like a different Mongo database 
a local one set up so I can have like a bunch of different Mongo databases, one that I install through Mongo and then one through my app. Do you have any more questions? No? Okay. Can we give um